What's up guys, thanks for tuning in and joining me again. Hey, today, simple, easy video. This video is for the backyard guy. This video is for the backyard guy that wants to put some good ribs on the table for his family for Memorial Day weekend that's coming up. So that's what we're cooking today. Simple, basic, backyard, Weber grill spare ribs. If you're having problems, tune in today because Eric gonna get you right on those spare ribs. Stay tuned. Yeah, boy. All right, guys. Again, I said this video is for the backyard guy, and I mean that. This is for the backyard guy. If you're a professional or you know more about ribs than the man on the moon, then you can skip over this video. I had to get a little coffee. This video is for the backyard guy. So, again, we're doing spare ribs. As you notice, this is a full spare rib. It's not a St. Louis cut. It's a full rack of spare ribs. Uh, the breastbone is still on. No trimming. Nothing. So we're going to make this real simple. Real simple. Always start with a sharp knife. Real simple. I'm not cutting it, the rib tips off. I'm gonna leave the breastbone intact. But I will tell you to take this little piece off right here. Because if not, it's really not a, it, it's, it adds no value. It's just a piece of fat. Take that off. If you wanna trim up a little bit of this fat, you can. But, um, I wouldn't care too much about that. We're gonna leave this front of this rib just like it is. Always start with the back of the rib. The back of the rib, you know you got this membrane on there. If you can lift it up, lift it up. Take your hands, get up under there. It ain't nothing, it ain't no special technique for it. Just take it off if you can, because you don't really want to eat that. Alright, try to get up as much of it off as you can. Again, it's really all about just getting your fingers up under there. taking off as much as you can and that's it first step Stay All right. tuned. second step this little flap of meat right here doesn't really bother me but since I'm teaching the beginners way of doing these ribs I would take it off I wouldn't throw it away this makes a hell of a taco trust me and see that's pretty much it I'm not doing anything else I'm gonna take a little bit of this fat off the off the tips but that's it this is not a competition rib. We ain't doing no competition meat. This is just some good meat to put on the table for you and your family. So, my first thing, olive oil. A little bit of olive oil. It's gonna help your rub stick. My second thing, for the backyard guy, put a little hickory smoke, liquid smoke on yours. For the backyard guy, that's just starting out. Throw you a few dabs of that on there. Ain't nothing wrong with it, man. If you don't, really know how to work wood and all that, don't worry about it. Just throw you a few dabs of that on there. My second, I'm using my seasoning. I'm doing a 50-50 combination of grilling dust and our grill party dust. That's what this is. Let me get that out of the way. Dust it. Dust it. Nice little, this is a thick piece of rib right here, so I'm gonna put a nice little dust, a nice little coat on there. If you can, throw you some 18 gauge pepper on there. I think pepper and ribs really go good together. Let that sit for about five or 10 minutes. Go flip it over and we're gonna do the next side. Stay tuned. The back side seasoned up. We let it sit for about 10 minutes. Let's flip it over. This side, same treatment. First things first, olive oil. Just move it all over. Second thing, your favorite seasoning, if you don't have my seasonings, get some uh, Lowry seasoning salt would be good. Just don't use as much because it's kind of salty or whatever your favorite seasoning is. And just go ahead and get in there. And kind of stay kind of high on the ribs. Don't go too low. Don't, don't season this way. Stay up kind of high and dust them really good. And don't forget, don't forget the, the top side. If you want to, you can get the bone sides, the bones as well. But I ain't worried about all that. And that's it. Now, what I do is I'm gonna let this tack on for about 10 minutes as well and we'll go on this to the next step. This is my next step on ribs. I've always done this on ribs. I've never shown anybody on camera this next step that I do on ribs. But let me tell you something. It's not about getting the ribs tender. It's about pushing the seasoning in the meat. I do it for all of my meats, for my brisket, for my ribs, for my chicken. Trust me, a jacquard. This right here, 
Like I said, it's not about getting the ribs tender. It's about pushing flavor into the meat. The best time to do it is when you've let it sit for 10 minutes and the rub has started to tack up. Because what will happen then is it'll, a lot of the moisture will come up and it'll help it help the seasonings go down a lot easier. And I just take it and I just go over the rib. And when you get down by the bones, turn it sideways like this when you get by the bones. And just hit it. And I'm pushing it. As you notice, there's not much seasoning on here. But let me tell you something. Those ribs are going to be really seasoned. Trust me. Stay tuned. All right, these are your ribs. Now, my recommendation would be to put them in the refrigerator for probably about an hour um, after you season them up and after you jacquard them and just let them sit and let that let those seasons go down and, and really, uh, since you pushed them down in the meat with that jacquard, it's gonna really develop some flavor for you. So about an hour in the refrigerator and uh, that liquid smoke, that olive oil in those seasons is gonna kind of create its own marinade for these ribs. And next step, let's put them on the grill, baby. Stay tuned. All right, next step is pretty basic. I think everybody knows how to set up a grill with charcoal, a charcoal grill, but I'm gonna do a combination of two things. We're doing I'm doing a combination of lump charcoal on the bottom of this fire starter and I'm gonna put charcoal briquettes, a few of them, on the top. What I have in here also is a kind of like a charcoal tray. I'm gonna utilize, utilize this later, but I'm gonna put my charcoal on top, lump charcoal in the middle, light it up, and we'll get to the next step. All right, guys, I'm gonna use apple and hickory. Those are two good starter woods uh, for beginners, man. Apple's gonna add the subtleness and the hickory's gonna add the great little smoky flavor. So we're just gonna take one of each, one apple, one hickory, and throw them in the uh, charcoal tray. And uh, no particular order, just throw them in the bottom. And we'll take the charcoals and throw them on top. And we'll just let them burn down uh, just like that. So that's it. That's all you need to do. Let's get to cooking. All right, we got a rack in there. I just like to put a rack in there so I can move the meat around. All right, we're going to put the ribs in here. Rib tips towards the fire. Uh, it's a lot more meat and bone over there that can absorb a lot more heat. No particular way just get it on there don't put it too close but put it close enough so that the heat and the smoke can roll right over the ribs and that's all you got to do ready to go put the lid on actually um let me turn this lid around real quick and open up the damper wide open and uh you're good to go that's it all right we're gonna let these ribs sit in here for about Oh, I say about an hour before we do anything with them, before we check them. Don't go peeking at your meat, because like they say, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. All right, we are an hour into the cook. Let's take a look at them. They look good. If you notice, the fire is nice and calm. The wood that we put under the charcoal has kind of burned down into coals. Beautiful. It's starting to take on a little bit of color. You're starting to get a little pooling of moisture. Perfect. At this point, let them go. Go another extra 30 minutes. We want to get that color a little bit better, and then we'll flip them over. Stay tuned. All right, another tip. I don't think I need it, but I'm going to add it anyway, is when you're cooking in a closed surface like this where the heat is really close to the meat, a great thing to do is to get you a pan of water, hot water. Stick it on top of the flame, and that way that'll help to regulate the temperature so that you won't be cooking your, you won't cook your ribs so fast and it'll help slow it down a little bit. So we're gonna let that water sit there. I don't think we need it, but I'm gonna put it in there anyway. And uh, we're just gonna let them go another 30 minutes and we'll check them out then. All right, it's been an hour and 30 minutes. Let's see what we got going on. All right. The ribs look really good. Really, really, really good. I'm gonna try to get a close up on these ribs. They look real good. If you notice, we got some moisture down there, some pooling. We got our water in there. They look real good. So you know what? I'm not gonna touch them, man. I still want a little bit of color on them before I flip them. 
So we're going to let him go another 30 minutes for a total of two hours. So y'all stay tuned. 30 more minutes on these ribs. And again, I'm not adding any more charcoal or any more wood. But if you wanted to, this is the time to add it. Right in that little corner. A little piece of wood if you need to. But I'm not. I'm just going to let them roll. Stay tuned. You know what? Change the plans. I'm adding wood. If I'm going to teach you how to do it, I'm going to teach you how to do it right. So. Let's take this water off for a minute. And let's add a few pieces of... This is a few pieces of apple. I'm not going to add hickory. I'm just going to add a few pieces of apple. And that's it. Put the water pan back. And let the smoking continue. Stay tuned. All right, just a little tip. At this point, a lot of guys get confused um, because they see all this smoke coming out. Well, it's really not that much smoke. This is apple wood. I didn't put hickory in there for a reason. You know, hickory can oversmoke your meat if you don't know how to properly use it. So this is apple. It's not going to oversmoke it. It's going to add a nice, subtle uh, flavor to it. But at this point, since we just added the apple wood, you're going to have to give it a few minutes to burn down. And once it burns down, because we have the dampers open all the way up top, and at the bottom, this wood will start to dissipate. And what you'll probably see is just a light blue uh, stream of smoke coming out. But this pit isn't insulated or isn't, you know, really uh, welded to perfection. Or, you know, it got, it's got, it has gaps. So you'll see a little bit of smoke coming out the sides. Don't worry about that. Just let the train begin. Now, if this was black smoke or dark gray smoke, then yes, you need to let that, take that lid off. Let that wood burn down to coals and then continue on. But we don't have to do that on this one. So don't let this fool you. Don't get scared on this one. Just let it do what it does, and that's burned down. Stay tuned. All right, it's been two hours. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Let's get a close-up on them now. That's the color you're looking for right there. That's the color you're looking for right there. And if you see all that moisture pulling in, that water along with that smoke, that water added a little bit of moisture as well. And all it did was grab that smoke and drop it on top of that meat. Man, if you could smell, it smells really good. So uh, at this point, usually I flip it over. So I'm, a, I'm just going to go ahead and flip them over and let them cook on the other side for about an hour as well. So we're two hours in and we're going to flip them over. That'll be our third hour. Stay tuned. All right. I don't use tongs. I use spatulas. Just flip it over, another hour. May add a few more, a few more loads of charcoal, a few more handfuls of charcoal. And that's it. Water pan back on. Lid back on. Let's let it go for now. Stay tuned. All right. We are about three hours and some change into these ribs. Let's check it out. Man, the color is amazing. Look at that. The color is amazing, man. They look good. And we still cooking them bone side up, so... I think the only thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to wrap these ribs because I don't have any foil again. So all I'm going to do is turn these around, put the bone closest to the heat, and let them roll. All right. These ribs have been on here for about, mm, about four hours and some change. Again, I'm not wrapping them. I just want to show you how to cook ribs. The old-fashioned way before the aluminum foil craze came about but uh, as you can see they look really good they look really good I took my charcoals and just dumped them in the bottom of the grill I took them out of that charcoal tray and just dumped them in the bottom of the grill you can kind of consider this char grilling right now but uh they ready to go they are ready to go so I'm just gonna let them rest here on the grill for about maybe about 40 minutes or so all right there we have it beautiful set of spare ribs breast on and uh total cook time on these was probably about four hours 45 minutes because we didn't wrap them 
we just let them roll. But what one tip would be that if you're gonna cook them and it's your first time cooking spare ribs, at the three hour mark, I would wrap them. I would wrap them up in aluminum foil, double wrap them in aluminum foil. And if you can, add you a little bit of liquid to the foil, maybe some vinegar, some apple juice, or maybe even some Coca-Cola and let them cook for another hour and check them every hour until they're tender enough for you to eat. Um, Cause there really is no timing. It's all about how you like to eat them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna cut them up. Stay tuned. All right, I got two knives here. This is actually my brisket knife. Well, let's start here on the end. And again, this is the breastbone. So let me start on this end. Ooh, they're still hot. Ooh. And when you get up here to, towards the when you get up here towards the the breastbone. There's gonna be a little piece of bone in here from the rib tips. Let's just go right through it. Let's cut one more. Where's my bone at? Gotta watch these ribs because sometimes they, they turn on you. Like that one did. That's a small bone that turned on me. There's another one. So let's check it out. Look at there. That's beautiful, man. You can still get a little, you still got a little bit of smoke ring very tender very juicy this is the rib tip and this is the spare rib and man look at that beautiful bark it's juicy we didn't even have to wrap it that's what you're looking for that's what you're looking for in a beautiful spare rib right there y'all stay tuned let's get to eat all right guys i want to thank y'all for joining me again uh, again this video is for the beginner this is for the beginner cook that wants to put some good food on the table for memorial day and here we are a beautiful plate of ribs, man. Beautiful plate of ribs. I mean, that's what it's all about. Don't be afraid to do it. There ain't nothing to it. That's the rib tip hanging off right there. And that's the beautiful spare rib right there, man. But that's it. Delicious. That's what you want to see. That's what you want to see. No sauce needed. No wrap needed. Mm. So again, I just want to thank y'all for watching my videos. Please like, share, and subscribe. And again, don't be afraid to grill. Get out there and grab you some spare ribs if you're ready for Memorial Day weekend. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Mmm.